um, surround yourself with good people, find people that are doing what you want to do. Like right now, not like people that say they're going to do it. Um, but people that are actually doing what you want to do right now, and then just listen to what they say. I mean, it's really simple, right? Listen to what they say, take the coaching, do the work, never give up. And you can have anything that you want. In life. Welcome to the land life podcast with your host, PJ Riley. What's going on, guys? Welcome to the Land Life Podcast. My name is PJ Riley. Guys, don't forget, if you're getting value from this podcast, if you're learning a ton, and I think you definitely will today, uh, like, subscribe, leave a comment. Um, five stars on iTunes. I think you do stars on Spotify, too, so do that. Um, yeah, guys, and if the, the guest here, John Barnack, gives you, uh, if you get value from him, and if, if you're learning a ton, uh, he's going to give you ways you can contact him at the end of the podcast. And uh, so make sure you stick around to the very end. Um, John, John, how's it going? Good, man. Love and life. Yeah. It's That's funny. Awesome. I say, um, have you ever seen the movie Office Space? Oh, oh, yeah. Okay, cool. I think a lot of people have. So like, <laughs> there's, remember the scene, real quick story. So you remember the scene where he goes into the therapist and the therapist is like, tell me about your life. And he's like, well, every day gets worse. So technically <laughs> this is the worst day of my life, right? So like, I'm the other way right i'm very optimistic i'm a glass 100 percent full right there's air and water so like i just flipped the script on it and i like to say every day of my life gets better so technically today's the best day of my life that is awesome man and an office space quote to get it started dude we're already on the right we're already doing really good uh we met through matt cavanaugh and tim winfrey jr um two awesome guys if you get a chance check out their podcast too they got a really good one um Two great guys, uh, you know, a lot of a lot of energy and, and excitement in their their show. So, John, what part of the country are you in? So, I'm right outside of Chicago, Illinois. I live in Oak Park. Okay, and um, real estate investor. You're a realtor. Are you just in that area? Or are you just working in that local metro area? Yeah, great question. So, we've got mainly that you know Chicago MSA area uh, we've got a real estate team over uh, four or five states now we just expanded to Milwaukee and started doing a couple of flips up there okay cool awesome so kind of like that midwest area is is it all just in the midwest area yeah so illinois wisconsin indiana uh, missouri and then we've nice. got one straggler out in florida that we're starting to build with everybody's in florida dude Everybody. Everybody wants to be in. I love that place too. It's so nice and it's warm and like I'm in Denver, dude, and it's snowing right now and it's cold and we haven't turned the heat on in the house yet. So I should probably go do that. We had AC on last week and now it's freezing cold out here. So yeah, I can see why you'd want to go to Florida. Um, so give us a quick background. I mean, I, I don't want to get too deep into your background, but let's give us like a Cliff's Notes version of, you know, where you were at and what you got, what got you to the point we're at now. Cool. So Cliff Notes version. It can be a little so, extended cliff notes. When, you know, when I was born. <laughs> um, so <laughs> then before I, was I got three and I played soccer. It was a it was a warm day. I started baseball when I was eight. No, so I was <laughs> before real estate, I was a factory worker. So I, I love telling people that and saying that up front just because I didn't go to college and have like a bunch of degrees. I didn't I didn't have like the the sales professional pedigree, right? When I got into this business, I came in under a top producer. Uh, basically just work my ass off, right, to, to kind of get to where I'm at today. I always tell people I, I feel so so lucky and blessed. I'm a, I kind of feel like the luckiest person on the planet just because of the people I, I, I've met, like, on the journey. Uh, the first agent that brought me into the business, my, my first mentor, she was a top producer doing 120 transactions a year by herself, right? So she kind of got me started. My second mentor was a, he owns a property management company. Uh, he managed about 500 doors. He owns 300 himself right out of that. So uh, just like that, you know, getting started there and then just meeting great people over and over again. Um, I've been, um, you know, a, a buyer's agent under a top producer. Uh, I've been on uh, my own team, right? Built my own team. Uh, been in the franchise model. Me and my partners end up starting our own firm. We were really big on the real estate investing side and we were committed to making sure we brought that to the traditional real estate uh, model, right? You saw all the models out there. You didn't really see a lot that were encouraging or promoting that real estate investing aspect. And we felt like a lot of real estate people 
got into the business because they wanted to do investing, right? But there wasn't like a clear path for it. So our brokerage, when we were independent, it was uh, very investor friendly. We had in-house cash buyer, private fund that we established and we've been growing over the years. And uh, really we were trucking along. We were going to take over the world, right? With our model. And about a year and a half ago, uh, well, two years ago now, man, COVID, I feel like COVID was like, one month that like got stretched out over like two years. I, I completely um, agree. But we, so over COVID, we did a bunch of reflecting. Uh, we diversified into a couple other areas to add some more streams of revenue for ourselves and for our agents. And really we just kind of got to the point where uh, we had to eat some humble pie. You know, we swallowed our pride and we were like, you know, our goals are too big to accomplish on our own. So we started looking for some partnerships that we could create or, or company that we could align ourselves with. Um, and we stumbled across this company called Real. They were very young, less than 2,000 agents. And uh, we came aboard there, transitioned, shut down our brokerage, transitioned with them. Uh, like I said, since then, we've, we've about doubled the size of our team. We've grown into about four or five states. Um, we're starting to move our investing business into new markets through that growth. And um they had asked me to step up and run the state. I was really looking forward to not being a managing broker anymore. Uh, but when we were transitioning over, the managing broker that was here put in this two weeks to like, hey, John, I know you're getting out of this role, but if you don't do it, we have to kind of shut down the state for a little bit until we find someone else. So I stepped up. It was supposed to be a short term. That was a year and a half ago. Um, I just fell in love with the company, fell in love with the people. Support is amazing. Uh, like I said, right now I manage 80 or so agents across our state, uh, which was a, you know, about a third or a quarter of what we had before. And I feel like I do like a fraction of the work here just because of the support that we have. So, you know, managing broker, running the state, uh, we've got a team of about 50 agents over about four or five states right now. Uh, we've got eight fix and flips going on. We've got a private fund, uh, you know, between two different markets. Uh, short-term rentals. We just, I think we've got five or six right now. Our goal is to add another five or six before the end of the year. Um, just a lot of plates, man. But it's, that's, that's the way my brain works. I'm a crazy person. I like, if I'm not doing stuff, like I just, I, I feel like I'm sitting still. So I, I love having all these different things going on and uh, having my fingers in them. That's awesome. All right. So let's go back. Let's go back a yeah. little bit. This is a big story. And like, if you're, let's say you're the 22 year old guy, that's like, wow, I want, I want to do all those things. Okay. How did you, how were you able, no college, right? You have no experience, no nothing. And you're jumping in like, now I got this mentor. Now I got this mentor. How do you meet all these guys? Where, where do you start? You know, that's a really good question. And 22 is, a, I don't know if you picked that age on purpose, but I, so 23 is when I went full time. I, I, I got close. So my, Really close, right? And I've been doing it for 10 years. I'm still a relatively young guy, but I, got, I have so much more to work, right? There, there's so much more ahead of me right now. Um, I'm only scratching the surface, right, of what's possible and, and, and the things that I've learned. But um, honestly, it's going to sound kind of cliche, but luck, man. I mean, that, so, well, there's two two ways. One, you can be lucky. And I think I started out lucky because my, so it was my best friend's mom. And she actually heard me complaining about my job. She's like, why don't you get into real estate? I was like, I'm not going to go into sales. Right? I was getting a paycheck every two weeks. Yeah. I was like, well, if I don't sell a house for three months, right? I was like, where do I find my clients? And she was like, I remember this is what triggered it. She's like, well, if you get your license, you come work for me. She's like, last year I made $300,000. I was like, Psh, done, right? <laughs> At 23 like, how do, or yep. How, how do I do that? Right. How do I do that? So, you know, that, that was just through a um, high school friend, right? That yeah. you know, I just happened to be talking about my job one day and she dropped that question on me. Uh, the next person, you know, uh, property manager, dude, he was uh, actually my mom's neighbor. Uh, and, and then my mom, when I got in real estate, just started shouting it out her window, apparently. And this dude just hurt. And he came up to me and said, dude, if you want to go to the next level in real estate, you got to learn how to work with investors. You got to learn how to invest yourself. Uh, I did a ton of networking. Early on, I was a networking machine. So uh, there's a game I used to play. Uh, and I would go into a networking event with a pocket full of cards. The goal was to pass out all my cards and get more cards than I came with from other people. Nice game. Uh, every single week. I've got a whole, actually, I still have it today. I'm like one of those crazy people. I keep all like my records and stuff like that. I've got a box of cards 
um, that I can like, I can point to and say, here's like where I built my database and built my business to. Yeah. So it was uh, a little luck the people that like got introduced to me. Um, I believe it or not, I was not very coachable in the beginning. Um, I was not a, no way. A 23 year old kid was not coachable. I, I was dude. I was like, um, I always thought I knew better. Right. I always felt like even the you know, that zero experience, but like yeah. the way you're doing it is stupid. I'm going to do it better. Right. I, I have no idea. Right. But that's how I used to think. And it took me probably about four or five years of being broke right, to, yeah. to give that up and be like, all right, maybe this person has been doing it for 30 years, has something right valuable that they can pass out. Or maybe this person that's making a million dollars a year um, could teach me, right, how to make $100,000 a year or $500,000 a year, whatever it is, right? So it, it took me a while to kind of struggle through my own personal pains and, uh, you know, the lack of gains and progress uh, before I finally just, like, put my hand up and said, all right, I'm done doing it my way. Like, how can I learn from you? Just tell me what to do. I remember there was a moment, a uh, very defining moment, did Tons and also I've invested probably tens of thousands of dollars in coaching, personal development programs, seminars. Uh, I've got an li ongoing list of books. I'm at, I think, 130 now uh, that I've consumed over uh, my career. And I'm always reading something new. I'm always learning something new. Um, very passionate about that. I think you have to kind of be obsessed with getting better and obsessed with learning new things uh, in order to progress yeah. Um, at the rate that I did, right? Um, the other thing is I just wasn't afraid to fail. Uh, failure is a very foreign concept to me. Uh, I don't ever see something as a failure. It's either I, I accomplish it or I, I learn from it and get better. So with that mindset, um, I wasn't afraid just to go mess a bunch of shit up. Right. It was just like I knew if I, I knew if the more that I messed up, the quicker I messed it up, the faster I could learn what worked. So my goal was always just to mess everything up as fast as I could so that I could figure out how to really do things the most efficient way, right? In the best way. Yeah. Um, an example of that, I uh about four years ago, four or five years ago, I took on cold calling. Um, and I was like, I'm gonna learn how to cold call. And I picked up the phone and I had a Mojo Dialer, if you're yeah. familiar with that, right? Mojo oh, yeah. Dialer. And I was blasting through calls and I was calling FISBOs and canceled and expired. And at Tom, my Tom Ferry scripts, right? Downloaded the free scripts he has. And I was just blasting through those. And um, my first traction I got was with the FISBO. So I was like, all right, cool. I'm going to run with FISBOs, right? This is what the universe is putting in front of me. So I'm going to go with it. And I you know, just started working on FISBOs. Um, it took me probably about three months. So I started in February, from February to um, May. So March, April, May. So March, April, May. May was when the, the first listing that I took uh, actually closed. It took me about three months to produce a result from start to finish. Um, from cold but, calling that you had never done prior? Never done prior. I just okay. figured up the phone, started making calls. Figured it out. Figured, I'm going to do it today. Started it, yeah. and it took three months to get that first sale. So if you're to listening that to first. This, money in my pocket, right. Perfect. From doing it. And that was probably hundreds of phone calls, right. Uh, dozens of appointments. And that's fine. It was a progression, right. I learned, um, what to do, what not to do, how to get better. Uh, I yeah. tracked my numbers. So I knew like what my ratios were like down to like a 10th of a percent. This is how my brain works. Dude. Now real quick, I were you in a room by yourself or are there other people cold calling? And so you're like, Oh, I heard what he said. You know, I heard what she said. Was by, it like by myself. By myself, dude. So like, I, I literally like, right. Like I would shut the door. I had a sign on my door that said uh, prospecting, do not disturb. And I'm like, people, like people would come up and they knock on my door and I'd like look back at them and just like go back to what I'm, I just ignore them. Right. It's like, dude, focused right on the mission. That's awesome. So I, uh, February to May, first result from May to December to 26 more listings that year. The next year, I said I, I consistently took three to five listings a month. I think my best month was seven. Um, I took in one month. So like, and I, I tracked my numbers. I made fifty five hundred phone calls that first year, from February to December. Um, had probably uh, well over a thousand conversations, um, and went on uh, probably a hundred plus appointments. Uh, but it was like. I just wanted the result, man. 
I did, I did, that's the only thing that mattered to me. Was like, I just wanted to figure this out and I was just willing to plow through mess up after mess up after hang up after yell after until I just got it down. And then it just became, once I got the result, it's like, okay, now I can back into any results that I want. And then it was just tweaking and affecting. And like in the beginning, it was three or four hours a day. I had to like to get through and mess stuff up. Uh, by the end of it, I was taking three or four listings a month, calling one hour a day because I got, you know, efficient at it. I knew what worked. I knew what didn't work. Um, I can almost tell from the first conversation, like, okay, this person is going to list with me and it'll probably be in two or three weeks. All right, that's that's to the point I got to with that. That's cool. So so let's work that back then. So if, if yeah. you are a new person watching this, 5,500 calls per year, correct? Am I, am I my right? first year. My first, first year. year. That dropped dramatically the second year because I, I got more efficient right at it and I got better at it. So that's, I think, a lot of people miss the gap on, um, you know, they hear that and some people hear that 5,500 calls. And they're like, I got to make 5,500 calls like to every year to make well, that's what I did the first year to figure it out. Yeah. And really the intent was to plow through as much as I possibly could and figure it, you know, mess it up enough times that I could figure out what, what doesn't work and figure out what does work. So then, like I said, the next year, it was like an hour a day. Uh, I was making calls, producing the same results that it took me three or four hours to do the previous year. Yeah. Yeah. So if you are a new person or even an experienced person who doesn't cold call, I don't cold call at all. So I hate it. I'll yeah, it anymore. if you wanted to get into that, if you want to add that, I guess, tool to your tool belt, I mean, maybe you can't do 5,500. Sorry, sorry. You can maybe 5,500 is a little bit intimidating, mm -hmm. but how many can you do today? Right. Yep. How many can you do right now today? I mean, what is it? Noon, 1230. Let's do, let's try to get 30 in, in the next, I don't know what would be a reasonable time in the next two three hours is two that hours, possible yeah. let's give it a Very shot possible. let's see if we can get 30 and then tomorrow you know start the day and try to get 35 something like that but yeah. um you know it, it, it i just want to see some actionable type things that somebody could do right now once they're done with this podcast of course you know jump yeah. on the phone and let's see how many you can do right make it a game try to figure it out let's let's knock out as many calls as you can get and and try to catch up that, that 5500 a year don't get me wrong that ain't easy that's tough but if you can do that, or if you can even get close, um, you know, you can, you can definitely up your numbers quite a bit. And I'm sorry, how many, how many actual uh, conversions did you get in that first year out of those 5,500? I, I missed um, It was about 20, 24 or 26, somewhere okay. in that range. And what was the return on those 26 for, for you as a, as a realtor? Um, Roughly. That's a good question. Um, um, I would say probably half of them closed that same year uh, mm -hmm. that I got. So let's call it 12 or 13 uh, deals. Uh, my average commission net uh, is about five or 6,000 for my market. So I mean, 50, 60,000 uh, just from that one activity stream. Yeah. Would you be willing to make 50 to 60,000 bucks? In, at 23, you're even if you're you're new, right? You've never cold called before. Mm -hmm. Would you be willing to add an additional fifty to sixty thousand dollars by just picking up the phone and making a game out of it for three hundred sixty five days? I, I love what you just said. So, and some people that's going to go right over their heads, but I oftentimes make things into a game. So I'm extremely competitive. Yeah, I like to win, right? And I, I challenge myself probably harder than anyone else would ever challenge me. Right. But I, I love creating games. And if you do, like, if you create little games out of stuff to one, it'll kind of tap into that competitive nature. If you're a competitive person, it'll push you a little bit harder. Uh, but then two, it gives you an opportunity to give yourself rewards. One of the things I got uh, from a coach that I had is like, dude, you can't just, you can't just, you can't just cheat a speed your way through life. You're going to crash and burn right eventually and I, I have several times in my career you have to learn that balance but he said give yourself uh permission to take time off especially if you're hitting your goals give yourself permission to go waste money right every once in a while. Pro i don't know if you're a profits first dude but i love profits first yeah michael um, michael michael kaus something yeah something yeah something like that. <laughs> i can't say his last name either. yeah yeah but um it's a great book. I, I love that system because it gives you an opportunity to 
be stupid at times, right? It gives yeah. you the space to go waste money on things. Um, so like you don't get that itch to like, oh, oh man, I'm saving for two years and I haven't bought anything. It's like it, it, the structure is set up to reward you. And I think it's important to have that no matter what you're doing, right? If you're investing, cold calling, if you're door knocking, um, give yourself some rewards and give yourself some space to recharge and, and go out there and just kind of let your hair down a little bit. It'll, it'll yeah. give you some light at the end of the tunnel. So it doesn't feel like you're just always working, 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 working without any rewards. Yeah. Yeah. And it's fun to have like percentages that you're looking to hit, right. Or yeah. numbers you're looking to hit. So I try to work every, I try to make everything into like a numbers game to where I give myself a score every single day, regardless of what the, like if you're doing cold calls, let's say my goal was 35 and I hit 28, we'll do 28 out of 35. That's my percentage for the day in that category. Right. Keep adding yeah. it up. It's like sports, man. I never made the NFL. So it's kind of cool to have a st statistics, right? Statistic. You got yep. your own, you got your own sports card. You know what I mean? So you have your own statistics, attempts, uh, you know, uh, you know, scores, things like that. It's kind of cool and kind of interesting the way you can do it as in real estate, you know, if, uh, if you're a sports person or you're just like a, a competitive type person. Absolutely. And, you know, um, have you heard of Eric Thomas? Oh, yeah. I love Eric Thomas. You know, he talks about um, uh, that same thing. He's like, it's funny. He's like, everybody knows LeBron James stats. He's like, what are your stats? What are your stats in your business? What are your conversion ratios? What are your profit like? And I think a lot of people get into real estate. Well, that's, I'm not going to say a lot of people. I did this. I got in real estate and I just waited for business to show up. Right. And I just waited and say, like, well, well, you know, when my friends need me. They'll call me. <laughs> so yeah. like when you, when you shift it from a hobby to a business, start tracking your numbers, have some intentionality with your days, time block, stick to a schedule. Right. When you start doing these things, you see the the shift in your business um, turning from a hobby to a business, and then you can actually create projections. You can actually create the business that you want for yourself. But it starts with knowing where you're at, and then you know learning how to close those gaps. Yeah, yeah, and, and I think it's um it's it's kind of interesting when I will when I added in like statistics, like um real goals, like real things that weren't just you know when those offers come back. I'll buy some property. And then when I buy that property, I'm going to sell it at some point. You know, it was very vague. When I made it very specific, um, more deals started coming back, right? Yep. It was crazy. Like more deals came back. I Buyers would call me out of nowhere. You know, maybe it was because of the increased activity I had. You know, um, I was upping things. Everything was bigger and different and, and more interesting to me. It was more exciting. But I mean, once I started doing that, I started getting a ton of feedback. You know, a ton more customers, you know, buying, selling on, on both sides. I want to talk, touch on something. You said Eric Thomas. You're yeah. a big mindset guy then. Yeah, a lot of mindset. Uh, a big time day, mindset guy. How does that play into your into your business now? Dude, it's it's everything. I mean, from getting up in the morning, having a consistent morning routine, making sure I'm in the right straight, right state of mind going into my day so I produce consistently or produce effectively on a daily basis um, to dealing with. Uh, the things that don't necessarily go the way right, you want them to. Um, it, it, it's everything, man. It's why I read. It's why I journal. It's why I meditate. It's uh, everything. And, and interestingly enough, um, this is something I tell everyone to journal. People on my team, people that listen to me on these type of shows, my YouTube videos, Instagram, but whatever. I tell everybody to journal. Um, to this date, everything that I've journaled and written down has come true. That's awesome. Now there's still, right. And there's still things that I'm writing down. Like I have a goal to make a hundred thousand dollars. Now I haven't done it yet and I don't know when it's going to happen, Yeah. but my goal was to make $10,000 a month. And then I did. Then my goal was to make $20,000 in a month. And I did. Then my goal was to make $50,000 a month. Then one, one month I closed the deal and I got a check for $65,000. Now it's like, I'm writing down a hundred thousand dollars a month. I don't know when it's going to happen. But here's what I do know. And this is like my belief. Everything I write down comes true. So dude, if you're not journaling on a daily basis, if you're not interacting with your goals and the things that you want in your life on a daily basis, uh, I'm huge into like vibrations. I'm huge into like the things you put out into the world or what comes to you. That's why I think we found this company. That's why I think I like attract the mentors that I want into my life and the people that I'm following. It's like, I, I think all that stuff is tied together some way, somehow not like a conspiracy theorist type of dude, but that's, that's the way my brain works, man. Once you put out what comes back to you, 
um, focused, intentional thought patterns and, you know, um, vibrations, I guess, for lack of a better word, out into the universe, that's, you know, what you actually get. There's a quote I heard. It's, um, nothing's ever given, only given back. Hmm. And so okay. I just, I just heard it at this conference. So it's like, it just resonated with me. And it's like, what are you like putting out there? Another quote I heard is like, um, everything that you got and everything that you get is in line with your goals, consciously or subconsciously. Yes. Um, and I hear people all the time, they're like, I'm not hitting my goals. I'm like, well, what actions are you taking right? in line? Are, are your actions in line with what you say your goals are? Um, and really, whatever actions you're taking are in line exactly with what you, your goals are or what you believe you deserve in this world, right? I had a deserve coach once. Um, I say deserve coach. It was a girl I was dating. She had a deserve coach. So they deserve coach. Wait, real quick. What is a deserve, deserve coach? coach. It's a, yeah, it's an interesting concept, right? Okay. So she, like, her entire, um, the concept around this is, like, we get what we feel like and believe we deserve in life, right? And, you know, there's people that always feel like they're getting screwed over or feel like they get, you know, they miss opportunities or things don't ever work out for them. Um, which, by the way, my favorite phrase is everything always works out for me. And guess what? Everything always works out for me, but uh, there's people that believe that, and like the whole concept behind a deserve and the deserve level coach is um, the reason you're getting those things is because either consciously or subconsciously that's what you feel like you deserve in this world, and their whole focus is on raising what they call it, like their your deserve level, um, and I've actually I've seen this um, I've seen this in like real life where like um, I've, I've been stuck at certain income levels, right? For year over year over year. Uh, and then I did this work uh, in working on myself and, and raising the belief of what I felt like I deserved in this world. Uh, and then it's amazing. Like the next year, bam, right? Uh, money goes up or income goes up. So it's an interesting concept. I never heard of it before until I, you know, I dated this chick. She had a deserve coach. Um, so therefore I got deserve coaching right through her. Yeah. Uh, but it's like a just a remarkable concept that stuck with me all these years. So now you said you did some of the things. What are some actionable things that you can let us know about that you did that got you to the position you're at now? So I think what's really, I mean, there's tangible, like real life, like, you know, I took this class, right? Or I read this book or I listened to this podcast. Um, and then there's kind of like those intangible things where it's like, I meditate or I read this book or I journal, um, stuff like that. And I think it's, there's not like a one size fits all. Hey guys, here's the playbook to get everything that you want in your life. Yeah. Um, I think I can, I can articulate and I can like show people. I, I mean, I could, I could definitely show people the exact path that I went. I can show you the courses I took. I can tell you the seminars I went to. I can show you the, I keep all my YouTube videos that I've ever watched that I love. I keep it. I got a folder on there. Um, I got a list of all the books that I read. I could give someone the same blueprint. What I can't give someone is their own effort that they're going to put into doing that type because it's it's work, right? It's it's yeah. internal, it's introspective, it's mental work to really look at yourself and look at where you're at. And you have to do some analysis. You have to do analysis on you know why you feel like you are where you are, um, and you can't always do that on your own. Sometimes you need people, right? To yeah. objectively, you got to be open to it. You got to be open to receiving it. Um, you can't bring emotions to it. Someone comes to you and says, "Well, dude, you're not doing the work." You're like, oh, I am doing the work. Look how busy <laughs> I am, and look at all the stuff that's in my calendar, and I, you know, I do all this stuff and push all this paper around it. But, you know, you, you've got to, I can, I can show people what to do. I can tell people what to do all day. Um, the biggest thing for me was when I rose my hand and said, all right, I'm doing this for me. And until someone gets to that point in their life where it's like, okay, I've had enough of doing it my way. I've had enough of not being coachable. I've had enough of resisting the coaching, the training, and the people that are in front of, this is the craziest part. I spent years 
looking at people doing what I wanted to do and still telling myself that I felt like I could do it better or I could, I'm going to do it my way. Yep. Years, brother. <laughs> right. Yeah. So if I could go back and say anything, it's like, dude, if you're 22, that's, and I talked to 22, 23 year old kids, I'm like, dude, it's like, you're starting when I started. But if you listen to what I say, right, if you take my coaching, if you listen to my mentorship or guidance, it's like, I'm willing to give to you because someone gave to me. I remember there's one coach I had, and he said, he said, uh, Barnack, he says, come with my lesson. He said, Barnack, make sure that whenever you get to where you're going to get, you always give it back to someone else. And he looked me dead in the eyes. He said, because if I didn't give it to you, you wouldn't get, you wouldn't be where you're at. Right. So like, it's always stuck with me, man. It's like, that's kind of how I was brought up was always you know, make sure that you're always lending hands to the next person that wants to follow. Um, and I can do that all day. And I do do that every single day. We do calls with our team every day. I'm pouring into them and giving them, you know, what I got in my head. Um, I'm telling you, dude, when I can figure out how to get what's in here uh, to, to other people where they can just like, I did. I'm going to take over the world, brother. I'll tell you, yeah. I'll, I'll figure it out. It sounds it's like, like it, man. I it's a it's just it's I I can't for I I and then sometimes it sucks as a leader because you almost you want it more for other people than they want it for themselves. Yes. And there's there's a really fine line there where it gets exhausting, you know, trying to push someone to be successful. Um and sometimes it hurts because you see people who have potential. You see people who have the work ethic. You got the smarts, but like you're just missing one piece. Like you're not coachable, or uh, you know, you're not willing to do the work on yourself. You're not willing to read a book. Say, like, dude, here's a book that will take you to the next level. Yeah. All right, I'll read it later. It's like, all right, or, well, I can't help you till later, then, right? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, a lot of it hinges on the person themselves, where they're at in their life, and you know. For me, the biggest difference is when I took 100% responsibility. I went through a coaching program, and uh, I can, I'll sum it up like this. You know, Jim Rohn, you know, you know who Jim Rohn is. He says, when you will change, everything will change for you. And I remember sitting in this, I was in this class, and like I was fighting this coaching program, and I was trying to do it my way. And I just, one day, I just went to my coach. I said, dude. I'm, I'm exhausted, bro. I'm like, I am tired of doing it my way. I'm tired of beating my head against the wall. I said, like, you just tell me exactly what to do. And I just started taking the coaching and shot to the top of the class, uh, got so far past where we were supposed to be. I ended up coming and helping other people get to the top. Um, and I remember there was a moment where I, I said I was going to do something. And in my head, it was like already done. Like, no... There was, there was no doubts. There was no reasons uh, why it couldn't get done. Uh, every single possible obstacle or objection that could happen, I already had a, a way around or a way forward through. Um, and in that moment, I got that with 100% responsibility for my life and for where I'm at, the good, the bad, the ugly, the debt, the, everything, right? Business I had or didn't had with taking 100% responsibility gave me a hundred percent control of where it was going to go. Yeah. And until then I was just kind of floating in the wind. Yeah. I, I it, it's really hard. I'm, I'm quite a bit older than you and um, it's hard to, I, I, I've discovered that it, you can't make people do something they don't want to do. Right. Yeah. That's family, that's business, that's friends, that's everybody. It's really hard, especially when you're a giver, like I can tell you are, you know, you really want, you, you're like, you want to show the world what you discovered, right? This There's so much shit in my brain right now. And like, I can't believe I discovered it. I've got to tell somebody. So you're trying to give it to all these people and maybe they're not as receptive uh, to hearing it. They all have different times and different seasons of life that they're going to be receptive to, to that information. And so it's 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 very difficult when you're, you have all this stuff to give people and they just don't care. They don't want to listen. Yeah. Well, I heard... Um... Uh, an interesting, I don't know, it's a book I read or a video I watched or train something I took. It said there's only two, there's only two reasons why someone makes a significant change in their life. One is like a traumatic experience mm -hmm. uh, that really shakes their belief, right, and has them like question everything. And two, the other one is time. 
Like we literally have to go through life. And some people, and it's sad, some people live 30, 40, 50, 60 years until they figure it out. Yeah. Right. And, and that's figure it out is, is my perspective. Right. And that's my opinion. Um, there's different levels of that and people have their versions of figuring it out. But uh, for me, it was once I took a hundred percent responsibility and stopped blaming, because if you blame outside factors, how the hell can you change? Uh, that's like getting mad because it's raining. Right. And then it's like, well, I could do this if it wasn't raining. Well, how the hell are you going to change that? Right. If you always blame it on outside factors, you're always going to be limited on what you feel like you can potentially do when you take hundred percent responsibility you're the only factor that matters. You're the only thing that's holding yourself back from what you want to do. So, um, yeah, I just, I, I love that Jim Rohn. Dude, when you will change, everything will change for you, bro. And that, that's exactly what happens to me. Yeah, Jim Rohn has a ton of interesting, like he's got decades of uh, videos out there. Like if you get a chance, go to YouTube and check out, check this guy out. He's got, I mean, it's, it's unbelievable how much knowledge and influence. The guy's influenced Tony Robbins. He's yep. basically the guy that, uh, he's one of the guys that started literally everything. All the big people you hear, the book, the authors, the speakers. I'm gonna get a bunch of writers up there. Um, he's basically the guy who influenced all those guys. So go go on YouTube and check him out right away. Um, I want to shift gears just a little bit. You're sure. an, uh, an investor. Let's talk about some investments. Let's, let's talk about where that that part of your business is going and, and your life is going. Like, uh, what's on the horizon? What have you been up to? Yeah, good question. So. <laughs> I, I, it's interesting because I've I've had a I've had a, my personal experiences uh, with investing, and they I haven't excuse me they haven't been the greatest, right? <laughs> but I think that's what kind of makes it it's a learning experience, fun, right? Fun sometimes. Um, and I think the biggest thing I got out of like the personal experiences that I had is it's so much better to do it with the team and doing it with the right people. Um, and really everything that I do today is is with team, right? Uh, it doesn't matter what I do um, from real estate sales to real estate investing to uh, whatever it is, all of it is with team, man, because it's just so much easier. It's so much more fulfilling, right? Doing yeah. stuff together than trying to accomplish all this stuff on your own. Um, the first uh, rental property I had, I hated it. Um, okay. <laughs> well, so it was like, Hey, this thing broke, come fix it. Like, all right, whatever, you know, yeah. so go do that. And then like, and I was actually, I was pretty lucky there. I had, I only had two tenants in the time that I owned my rental property. I owned it over seven years. Um, you know, it made, it grossed over like $120,000 over the time I had it in rents. Gross, gross, right? Oh, and that sounds like a lot, but then, right, you've got mortgage and expenses stuff. I think it was like 300 bucks a month net cash flow or something like that. Um, so That's I had really that. really good, though. Thank you. Yeah, so I had that uh, over the years. Um, I ended up selling that. That's actually, I got my $64,000 check uh, from that because I sold it. Um, nice. And I had I bought it when it was like 70 grand. I put like 10 into it, sold it for like 150, like 70. That's awesome. Um, so that was my first experience with the rental property, but I hated being a landlord. Like I didn't want to, I don't don't call me for crap, right? I don't want to deal with that. Um, so like I've my vow I vowed like if I ever go back into that space, it's gonna be with a multifamily property manager. Right? I want 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. I want 50 doors in one building, right? I don't want 50 properties all over the world. Um, except I've got a pretty cool idea with uh, short-term rentals I want to do. Um, so that was my first uh, rental. I remember the first fix and flip. I decided that I was going to do someone to work on. Dude. Never. Yeah, <laughs> never again. So, never. Yeah, never again. I should never be doing that. <laughs> yeah, no, never. So I, I learned very quickly. Uh, I'm not a good painter. Um, I not like, I can't plumb things of, you know, it's not me, right? That's not me. That's not what I need to be doing. So um, it's funny, like a lot of the experiences I've had in my life have taught me what I don't want to do, right? And then the yeah. things to stay away from. But so that, those are my first couple experiences there. Um, today, me and my partners, we've got a fix and flip business. We've got a short-term rental business that we just started. Um, we do anywhere. I think the mo we had 11 fix and flips going at one time was the highest we ever got to. Um, that's pretty much our capacity. I think that was a little uncomfortable 
uh, being at that level, uh, with uh, at least with the team that we have right now, we could expand and grow um, a little bit more, maybe bring out another project manager. Right now we have one project manager, manages all of our projects. Um, but that, you know, the most that we did was that at one time we had, um, I think we have like six or eight going on right now. Is it two in Milwaukee? Um, talking to someone in Tennessee right now about uh, working and getting down in that market. I just had a call with a guy yesterday in Austin. He's like, dude, it's booming down here. Like, let's go. Start doing flips on here. So um, I'm just constantly networking and talking to people uh, all over the country because I just I just love talking to people, dude. Yes, yeah, so that's what this business is. But so we, we you know, and, and my role or responsibility, I guess, if you will, uh, inside of our uh, business acquisitions and sales. Um, so I'm out there looking for properties. I'm connecting with people who have good properties. Um, I train and develop uh, up and coming acquisition partners and people that want to work with us on that side of the business. Um, and then really the main focus is selling them, right? Because no one gets paid till we sell them. So um, I'm really just the, the front end guy. Uh, I go out, I'm really good at meeting people. I'm really good at networking. I'm really good at making connections. Uh, and then I'm on the back end, got really good at sales. Uh, you know, that three or four year period, I went through cold calling and FISBOs, got really good at nailing down ARVs, uh, nailing down markets, um, learning how to sell properties quickly. So um, I like to say everything always builds on each, on itself and everything is is for a purpose, right, in our lives. So, um, and everything I've done has gotten me to where I'm at today, put me in a position to win big, right, where I'm at now. So, um, Acquisition sales, uh, we've got uh, my other partner does all the funding, uh, which really uh, we created a private fund. Uh, we were, you know, when we were doing three or four deals a year, very early on, uh, it was easy to raise private capital. And we had a list of people and we'd find a deal and be like, hey, dude, got a deal. We need 250 for this one. What do you want to contribute to it? And, you know, we'd write notes for each person, you know, LLC and people, right? So all that crap. Um, when we started scaling up, you know, you go from three or four a year to three or four at a time, and then five or six, you know, raising capital turned into a full-time job uh, that we just weren't very good at, quite frankly, and we didn't really want to do. So we partnered up with a third party. Uh, we found a guy who uh, had started, I think, five or six real estate funds before us. We said, hey, here's what we're doing. Here's the private capital that we have that works individually. Can you help us out? He said, absolutely. So he, we built and created our, a fund for us. Uh, we just had all of our private guys put our money there. Uh, so then that way it's a lot easier for us to use it. Their risk gets spread over all of our deals versus now getting put into one deal at a time. Um, and what that's actually allowed us to do, um, you know, consequently is now it's a lot easier for us to even raise capital because you know, now we can go out and say, hey, um, you know, you don't have to, partner with us on one deal, you partner with us on all of our deals. Put your money here. It's in a safe, secure place. It's all SEC regulated. That guy made sure all of that stuff. Um, uh, so we're growing that. I think right now we're about five and a half million um, allocated at any given time. Um, but we're looking at people, you know, anywhere from a hundred thousand to, you know, 10 million uh, people that want to put money into that. So as that continues to grow, obviously our reach and then our capacity to take on more continues to grow. Um, but he manages all of that. He coordinates with our fund manager. Uh, he double checks everything, crosses all the T's, dots all the I's. Um, he's like the last line of defense. And he's a perfect person for it because he is analytical to death, like to the point where I want to strangle him sometimes. Because <laughs> he like asks so many questions and he like, he's got to double check and triple check numbers. Um, but that's like the person you want there yeah. before you start spending hundreds of thousands of dollars, right? So he he fits well into that role. I fit well into my role. And then our other partner is the project manager. And then he coordinates with all the GCs. Um, so I find it, get under contract, we coordinate with our GC guy, uh, project manager, confirm our bids. Um, once everything's confirmed, that package goes over to our uh, uh, Jeff, who does like all our funding and coordinates with the fund. We get it funded, project manager runs with it. As soon as we're about a week or two out, he comes back to me and says, hey, this project's getting ready to go on the market. I start getting the marketing ready uh, and then pop that bad boy back on the on, on the on the MLS, right? We use the we leverage the tools we got here. So yeah. um that's kind of at a very high level. Yeah. Um and I, I 
I tried to stay high, but also give some details too, right? So yeah. you can understand the, the structure of the team. Uh, I think it's important, man, to have a team. And, and I know a lot of successful people that do it on their own. And that's cool. I like doing what I'm really good at. And I like having other people that I know are good at their jobs around me that I can rely on and count on. And then that allows me to kind of go full speed where I'm at. And then knowing that the rest of the process will get taken care of, I'm going to get a good product in the back end, get it sold. Um, it's a pretty cool little machine that we built. And yeah, then, it sounds like it. And then I'll just, the last thing I'll add is just, uh, we just expanded into short-term rentals uh, this year. I know that market is booming right now. Yeah. Um, it took us probably about a month to get our systems in place and get our first one online. Is it August? I want to say July or August. Uh, we got our first one. Uh, I think we have three more now running. Like I said, our goal by the end of the year is to get like another three or four going. I think it was 10 uh, in our first year. We wanted 10 running by the end of the year. Um, and you started in August, right? Our first one was up and operational in August. So okay. you want 10 before December? Of the year, yeah. So we've got, and a lot of it, and what I'm starting to, to learn in the short term rental space, a lot of it is like, uh planting seeds get in front of the right people uh right the right landlord we so for example in aurora that's a second largest city here uh in illinois uh we got in contact with some developers that are um doing some projects downtown excuse me downtown aurora um and they got a 30 unit building coming up so we were able to talk to them about being a professional tenant that's what we call it and then um, they offered us 10% of their building. So three, they're gonna give us three out of a, a brand new building that's getting put up in Aurora. Um, and they said, if that goes well, they have plans to develop another 90 units downtown Aurora. So like, you know, you, you plant the seed, you have a good conversation, you come in, you execute, um, you know, that one connection starts us off with three, but could eventually lead to 12, right? In, in, that, in that one area there. And then landlords, no other landlords. Um, what I'm learning is it's it's a snowball type of business, right? Um, it takes a little bit of effort to get set up on the front end, make sure you have your systems in place and like all of your um, cleaning crews, security systems, right? So you got to get all that stuff in place up front. Once you get the systems in place, uh, then it's just networking, building the relationships. Um, and if you do a good job, you execute well, then you obviously just more of it continues to, to come your way. Yeah. So that's really interesting. So I, I want to go a little bit, you know, rewind just a minute here. So you yeah. said there's a, there's a new building in Aurora, right? 30, 30 units, you said? 30 units. Yeah. So redeveloped. Units, and you're getting right? yeah. redeveloped. Yeah. Redeveloped. It was a old crappy building. I don't know what, I don't know what it was before. Office building. Okay. Maybe they're redeveloping it into apartments and yeah, we talked to the developers. Uh, they're giving us three. Okay. So you're getting three. So I've never heard this in Airbnbs or, or in short-term rentals at all. So is this the idea you were talking about earlier? You, you have this like a newer idea referencing Airbnb? Um, no, no, that's not. Uh, okay. So then hold on to that thought. Hold on okay. to that. So I want to get into that too, if you, if you want to talk about it, but yeah. this is really interesting. So new development comes in, Hey, I just want three of those units and I'm going to turn those into Airbnbs. Mm -hmm. That's super interesting. I, I, I've never heard of that. I mean, maybe it's a thing, but I've never heard of that. So if you are, so basically you're, you're, you're putting basically like a giant hotel and you're getting three of the rooms. Yep. That's amazing. That's amazing. And, and it's all under your name. You are the owner of those three units. Um, it's basically like buying three separate homes just inside of this building. So here's, well, so here's the, the really cool thing. And this is what I love about the actual, the like the short term rental model. Um, we actually don't own those. So we've got a master lease in place. We guarantee the rent for them. Uh, we manage the, the property as if it was our own, right? Because we want to have a good image out there on the platforms. We want to make sure guests have a good experience, take care of like little things. So in reality, you know, professional tenant, short-term rental tenant is going to add more value to, um, uh, to a building or to a property than like a traditional rental would, right? Because the traditional renter is going to go in there. They're going to live there. They're going to use it up and then they're going to leave, right? Uh, what we're going to do, we're going to go there. We're going to guarantee the rent. We try to do two-year leases, make it a little bit more attractive. We'll guarantee the rent for two years. And then we want to maintain that property and keep it up. So then that way our guests always have a good experience. Yeah. So we're actually keeping the property up for the landlord. We're guaranteeing the rent. 
Um, we're going to add additional security measures to it. So we have sound monitors in there. So people want to come in and have parties. We've got ring doorbells so that if they say there's two guests and four people show up, right, we can nip that in the butt right away. So, I mean, there's, there's a lot of advantages for landlords to work with people like us, professional tenants and people who actually know how to run a good short-term rental business. And it's really, it's just, it's just our, being able to articulate that value, show that value on paper, um, is basically what got us in the door there. And like I said, that one opportunity there could lead to us, uh, you know, having 12 units uh, in that downtown Aurora area um, for short-term rentals. Yeah, it works for everybody. So it works for you because you're able to have three units without buying them, yep. right? You're just renting them. And then yep. you are, I guess, subleasing them to the the Airbnb, yep. the, the customer. And this person who owns this 30-unit building has three guaranteed returns every month of their 30. Yeah. It's, it's a win-win Absolutely. now. It's got to be kind of difficult though. What was that conversation like with the owner? I mean, I, I've, I've heard about this. I guess I have heard about this in like the, like a, a single structure, like a one, like a single family home. Like, you mm -hmm. know, I rent it out and then I Airbnb that, but I've never heard of it like in a building like this. What was that conversation like with this guy that that's the, the owner of this building? Yeah. Great question. And I don't know. I wasn't there for that conversation. My my partner had it, but here's, I can give you the feedback he gave me. Um, and these are his words, not mine. Uh, they grilled his ass for 45 minutes. I bet. Uh, question after question after question after question. What about this? What about this? What about that? Um, we've got a, a coach uh, that we've hired uh, who works with us on the short-term rental side. He has uh, over a thousand units worldwide. Um, so he gave us, like the verbiage, the language, the structure, like the systems that he uses to scale, that he uses to scale his business to that level. Um, so we, again, you, you know, you surround yourself with the right people. You find the people that are doing what you want to do and you follow them. Um, it's just That's another super cool. example of that. Yep. I just want to do, because I, I want to get the people that listen to this to be able to surround themselves with those same type of people. What is this guy's name? The, the, the coach you were talking about? Jay Massey. Oh, Jay Massey. Of course, Jay Massey. Yep. I know who Jay Massey is. Awesome. Everybody, everyone knows who Jay Massey Everybody is. Everybody knows who Jay Massey is. <laughs> but um, yeah, we hired him as a coach, man. I mean, we saw him. He executed at the highest level in the field that we want to get into. And we said, hey, dude, what's it take for you to coach us? And we yeah. just hired him. Great. Okay. Awesome. Now, sorry, that was my own selfish questions that I was like, what? I want to do this. This is awesome. So, okay. Yeah, you're good. Next step, uh, you said there was a... A, a, an Airbnb strategy you were thinking about. Did you want to talk about that? So it's, and it's not like revolutionary, right? I mean, it's just, um, you get a house it, on the moon. It's, I mean, yeah. maybe someday, right? Uh, go live with Elon up there. Um, right. But so I, um, it's just more of a personal thing uh, that I want to do. Uh, and I want to have uh, short term rentals in different parts of the world uh, so that I can go pretty much anywhere I want anytime. Like, so. If I had one here, there, and there, and there, um, I could just turn one off, go live in another part of the world, right? Uh, yeah. For however long I want. So it's not like this is going to revolutionize, right? The Airbnb. It's like I'm sure there's people already doing it. It's just a personal goal of mine, something that I think you know, the journal, right? It's a, it's on my bucket list. Own short term rentals in different parts of the world, so I can just go wherever I want, whenever I want, and I always have a place to live there. Yeah, that's super cool. I, uh, th I that's a great idea. Both my wife and I talk about that too. Um, which is what a cool idea to be able to go anywhere you want, bring the family, um, and and just go vacation, but live there and work there too while you're quote unquote vacationing. Yeah. Well, it's really cool. Is like if you build it correctly, they should all pay for themselves, right? Yeah. So like the the cash flow and the income coming from, like I'll just use five for an example. So if I have five, uh, and I'm living at one, the other four should cover my, so I should essentially be able to live for free wherever I want to go. In the world. Yeah. Yeah. Buy right guys. Buy right. Do not yep. buy based on emotion. Um, buy correctly. And you'll, you'll always get that return that you always wanted. Um, all right, uh, John, I, 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 it's, we're at our hour. I, I know you're a super busy guy. Um, anything we're missing? Anything you want to leave us with? You know, I've got, so I'm starting to do more and more of these. And I'm, I, I love them, dude. So here's, 
I learned from a coach of mine and said, if you, if you don't have an audience, borrow other people's audiences, right. Uh, to share your message or, you know, this is, this is part of me, like working to get what's in my head out to more people. Right. And I'm just, I'm, I'm extremely grateful and thankful of you, right. For giving me the opportunity to come here, share, um, you know, spew some of the gunk out of my head onto your show and into your listeners ears. I hope it adds value. Um, like I said, that's, that's always my intention, right. How can I help? How can I add value? So, um, you know, I, I don't, I, I, you, you would think like I would have like a sign off by now, yeah. right. Or so I could just say <laughs> super cool. And people are like, damn, like I gotta go follow this dude. But that's what you know, says just, at the end of every podcast. I'm just, you know, here, here's what I'll leave it with, man. I'm just, I'm just a dude. Yeah. You know, I'm just a, a regular guy. I've got kind of a crazy brain in that, um, I'm not afraid to take action and I don't really care what it takes to get, if I want something, I'm going to go get it. Right. And, and, and I don't really care what it takes to go do it. So um, what I guess I would want to leave people with, and, you know, you talk a couple of times about young people and I think young people are extremely um, susceptible uh, to like different things that are out there and uh, easy. I can see it being easy for them, like shiny nickel objects. And right. So they're always running around, listen to a bunch of different people and um i might be one of those people i might not but i would just if there's one thing i could say if you're not where you want to be right now in life uh you're the reason why right? so you catch yourself where you're at and dude if you're willing to do the work on yourself right and seriously look in the mirror take responsibility for how you got to where you're at um and, and you're really willing to do something different to go in another direction, um, you can have anything that you want. Uh, I'm a firm believer in if one man, if one human being, I should say, I don't want to limit it to guys because you know there's girls out there too that absolutely crush it, right? So if there's a human being that could do something, any person on the planet can do it. Um, never stop learning. Uh, always read. Uh, an early mentor of mine said, Cause he's like, make, surround yourself with successful people. And, you know, back when I was a 22 year old, you know, I was a punk rock kid back in the day, you know, I worked at a factory and all the people I used to hang out with were, you know, we, we partied in high school and no one had ambitions. Everyone's just happy to have a job. I was like, well, I don't know any successful people. He's like, well, start reading books. He's like, if you read a John C. Maxwell book, it's like you're hanging out with John C. Maxwell, right. For however long you're reading that book. So like, I, I don't, I don't like excuses. I don't like reasons. Um, if there's a will, there's a way, right? If you want it bad enough, you'll figure it out. Um, surround yourself with good people. Find people that are doing what you want to do, like right now. Not like people that say they're going to do it, um, but people that are actually doing what you want to do right now. And then just listen to what they say. I mean, it's really simple, right? Listen to what they say, take the coaching, do the work, never give up, and you can have anything that you want in life now. That's so cool. Hey, John. So the point of this podcast is I only made this podcast. I started earlier this year because I was like, you know, I've, I've learned a few things in my years. Um, but as a younger guy, even into my 30s, into my mid 30s, I didn't know what was really out there. I had no idea what was going on. So mm -hmm. I, that's why I made this podcast was so that guys like you could inform all these guys that were like me who didn't know anything. You know, we had no idea what was going on in the, you know, we have jobs, we have families. That's what you do, right? You know, we didn't know yep. there was more to it than that. Um, so that's why, and do I really appreciate you kind of giving us all the knowledge inside your brain. And I'm, I guarantee that's going to resonate with a lot of people. So how can people get hold of you? Cool. Um, so I'm not bashful or shy uh, about <laughs> anything. So um, I was, my personal cell phone number, 630-439. 6385. Uh, call me, text me. Uh, if it's a number I don't recognize, I'm not going to answer it. So leave me a message or shoot me a text. I'll absolutely follow up with you. Facebook, I'm on Facebook, John Barnack. Um, Instagram, John.Barnack. Um, I'm actually, I'm getting really big into Instagram right now. This year was my focus. Um, a lot of this content here, and then just a lot of like ideas and things I pick up from people, I just regurgitate there. I do, I'm starting to do a lot of reels. Um, so go follow me there. Uh, YouTube, go subscribe to my channel, John Barnack. Um, pretty much everywhere is John Barnack. 
uh, you can find me, J-O-H-N-B-A-R-N-A-K. Um, got my personal cell phone, reach out to me, go find me on social media. Uh, my goal is to get as much stuff out of my head into the world so other people can pick it up, other people can be successful with it, other people can learn from it. Uh, I always tell people who join my team, it's like, don't make the same mistakes I did. Learn from my mistakes, right? So then that way you can get to where I'm at faster, right? That's always my goal. How do I help someone get to where I'm at faster than I got here? The only way I know how to do that is to share what's worked and what hasn't worked, help people learn from my mistakes. That's such a great answer. Good job, John, man. That's awesome. Um, I'm, gl I'm glad you came on here. I really appreciate you coming on here. That's 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 great stuff right there. Um, so, John, here's the big question, though. Are you ready? We finish off every podcast with a seriously intense Mensa-level question. Hmm. I'm always ready. All right, here we go. We are land life. I buy and sell dirt all over the country, right? I buy and sell land, land, dirt and trees. If you could buy land anywhere in the world, where would it be and why? Ooh, you know, that's a really good question. And my heart goes to Jamaica. Ooh. Only because that's where my mother's from. So I'm, I'm half Jamaican. Um, and it wouldn't be to say that I have land there. Um, I would want to try and improve it. So one of the things that um, I don't know if you've ever been to Jamaica or like if you know, people born in Barbados. That's pretty close, I think. I don't know. I think it's the best. It's area. somewhere in there. There's a bunch of little islands, and it's one of the smaller ones. Perfect. So it's like a poor country, dude. Yeah. Like my my mom tells me story. Like they had ten mm -hmm. siblings in a two bedroom house growing up. Uh, they only showered when it rained. Uh, that type of stuff, right? All they ate was rice growing up because yeah. that's just what they had. So like. I would want to do it and want to bring resources there to try and improve the quality of life uh, for people there. Uh, when you go there and you go to the resorts and like you're in the tour, like it, it looks all cool and fancy and like, oh man, people are having a good time and everyone's partying on the resort. Um, but dude, five, 10 minutes down the road, yeah. it's that's just, that's how they live down there, bro. So my, that's what my heart tells me that's that's where that's the motherland, if you will, like quite literally. Um, I would want to go there and I would, I would want to try and make a difference, man. That's so cool. What a great answer, man. Holy cow. Yeah. You're a good dude, man. I think you got a lot of people rooting for you too. I think you're going to financially get there. So, um, probably pretty soon too. So it's, uh, let's, let's you're going to have to, uh, post on your YouTube channel too, like, uh, when you do it and what it looks like, you know, I'm, what the improvements look like or what, what types of things you make, maybe like a, uh, like a video series when you do it. You know uh, mm. what it looks like, so that everybody else can kind of see and see how cool that is. I I appreciate that, and I appreciate the kind words, man. Like I said, I just I, I just I sometimes I just feel like the luckiest person in the world, dude. I just yeah. so many great people um, have been willing to contribute to me and who I am today. Um, it would be selfish of me not to give back in some way or form, man. Yeah, yeah, that's really cool. Thank you so much, John. Appreciate it, man. Thank you. All right, for guys. Me. Yeah. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Until next time, uh, I'll see you on Land Life.